пост. Today, the office of president isn't a cursed job. I shall stand for the office of president of the Russian Federation. You are a bad president. You have no positive program, and you are unfit to govern the country. We will challenge you in these elections, and we intend to win. If a wonderful man like Navalny takes office, he will become a dragon. If a pointless person takes over, the country is doomed. Yeah, I officially announced that I will run for the most important office in Russia, the office of president. Where the current presidency is concerned, there is no viable alternative. People, here we have the power. God damn it, we have the power. They're attacking us. June the 12th, Russia Day, celebrates the establishment in 1990 of Russia as an independent country following the collapse of the Soviet Union. The rule of law and political freedom were to be the pillars of the new state. Under Putin, Russian Independence Day has become more and more of an apolitical public festival. But in 2017, opposition politician and Putin challenger at the forthcoming elections, Alexei Navalny, chose Russia Day in particular for nationwide anti-corruption demonstrations. Navalny has a positive message, especially for young people. You can change your country. You are, so to speak, a part of this wonderful land. He's also a patriot. He too loves Russia. This is also his message. But his statement, I believe, and that is his positive attitude, is that we can change things. We can change this system by taking to the streets. This, I think, is the new approach which he represents. In Moscow and dozens of other cities, demonstrations took place in addition to the official Russia Day festivities. Young protesters clashed with police almost everywhere. It makes me sick to hear the hypocritical comments by our civil servants who claim that our young people should not be interested in politics. Of course they must be interested and play a part. They must put pressure on those in power and force them to change. Today that could be the most important thing of all for our country. Three days later, in direct link, the annual citizens' question time with the president, Putin was also asked about Navalny and the youth demonstrations. Within the framework of democratic processes, demonstrations are always possible. I also regard it as the correct way of informing the leadership, whether in Russia or anywhere else, of people's opinions, especially if they disagree with current policies. 
But it is one thing to organize demonstrations and another to use these protests in order to provoke, in order to exacerbate the situation and attract attention. The main issue for him is corruption and the anti-Putin, so to speak. He's against Putin and against this system. He doesn't have any real program, so he's not really a typical politician, not even in Russia, where ultimately most of the parties don't have any program either. Prison and the courtroom are the best places for me. There, they all love me and photograph me. I really do try to smile, but it doesn't always work. Alexei Navalny, 41 years old, born in Moscow, lawyer, blogger and founder of the Anti-Corruption Foundation, a non-governmental organization which investigates corruption and embezzlement in the highest political circles. Navalny has never been a deputy, and his party, Progress, has not been officially registered. Since 2011, he's been involved in 16 court cases and given two suspended sentences, along with six short custodial sentences. I am fighting for a new future, for my family and my children. You have the same goal. Like you, I shall never give up and never go. Russia will be free. Navalny has been causing a stir in Russian politics for seven years now. In that time, he has emerged from the second row of the opposition ranks to become Putin's main opponent. Navalny burst onto the great Russian political stage in 2011, when he won the parliamentary election without taking part, so to speak. His strategy consisted of getting people to vote even in the absence of their own candidates. Before the election, via the social media, he disseminated two slogans directed at Putin, United Russia, a party of crooks and thieves, and vote for any party except United Russia. That was the first project which saw people take to the streets. After that rally, three months before the presidential elections in 2012, Navalny led an unauthorized protest march to the Central Electoral Commission. Numerous demonstrators were arrested, and Navalny was detained for the first time for 15 days. After that, Putin's election campaign did not run smoothly. In Moscow, there were numerous protests. Those in power promised liberal reforms. And then, in spring 2012, a new political cycle began in Russia. On May the 6th, 2012, the March of the Millions, as it's known, took place in Moscow. Between 50 and 100,000 people protested against the impending investiture of Vladimir Putin. The police broke up the demonstration with unusual severity. As a consequence, Russia saw the biggest political trial in its recent history. 17 protesters were found guilty. Most of them were given prison sentences of up to four and a half years. Why do you want to arrest me? I haven't done anything. Wait a second. Why are you arresting me? Stay here. All of you, stay here. Keep still, friend, or I'll break your arm. And I'll see you go to jail for it. Vladimir Putin wanted to put a stop to the protest movement. So the next day, the day of his investiture, the entire city was cleared. There was not a single person to be seen. And Putin's black escort drove along Moscow's dead streets entirely on its own.
The day after, security forces spent 13 hours searching Navalny's apartment. They seized computers, tablets and hard drives. It appears that the crime of the century must have taken place here, because 160 investigators are working on the case. Moscow, it seems, has never seen a bigger crime. What makes me particularly happy, however, is that the entire team of investigators has assured me that they intend to join my party as soon as I have established one. The mayoral elections in Moscow in September 2013 turned into a full dress rehearsal for Navalny's presidential campaign. As opposition candidate from a standing start, he captured 27% of the vote and came second right behind Kremlin candidate Sergei Sobyanin. Never before had a member of the opposition achieved a similar result, without any party support and without access to the important television channels. What's more, opinion posters had forecast that Navalny would capture no more than 4% of the vote. But just before the election, on July the 18th, 2013, Navalny's career suffered a decisive setback. He was sentenced to five years in prison for having embezzled funds of the state-controlled timber concern Kirovles. The entire country witnessed the mayoral candidate for Moscow being arrested in the courtroom. Observers spoke of a politically motivated verdict. Only a few hours later, there were demonstrations in Moscow, St. Petersburg and other cities. In the center of Moscow, thousands demanded Navalny's release. The bench of judges considers it necessary to set aside the verdict of the court in Kirov and to have Alexei Navalny and Pyotr Ofitsirov to be released immediately. Only a day later, Navalny regained his freedom. Amazingly, it was the public prosecutor's office that had challenged the verdict and Navalny's immediate arrest. Behind this was the Kremlin's calculation and its conviction that Navalny had virtually no real electoral support. That is what the polls indicated. For the Kremlin, it was important to show that Navalny and the opposition had no backing. But the sociologists were wrong. Alexei, we'll vote for you. Thank you. I can be useful to you and help. Thank you. The wave of public indignation triggered off by the verdict against Navalny even reached the Zeliga Youth Forum, which is close to the Kremlin. When Putin visited the forum, one of the participants asked him to comment on the situation. I will not deny that I found it strange for one of the accused, who had cooperated with investigators, to be given a suspended sentence of four and a half years, whereas the second person you mentioned was sent straight to prison for five years. However, it is for the courts to decide what is right in this case. Putin never mentions Alexei Navalny by name. Observers suspect that he has no wish to increase his opponent's popularity even more. This is political calculation, bordering almost on superstition. Putin believes there is a certain magic to his own status as national leader. He tries never to mention Navalny by name, so as not to impair this status by giving the impression of engaging in personal rivalry with his opponent. In line with the Russian constitution, Alexei Navalny was allowed to contest the mayoral election in September 2013. He would later challenge the verdict against him at the European Court of Human Rights and win. Since the court's decisions are also binding for Russia, the verdict was suspended, subject to appellate review. But early in 2017, the court in Kirov passed another judgment, which reinforced the contested verdict. Five years imprisonment to be suspended. Navalny has thus been legally convicted and, according to Russian law, can no longer be elected president. Undeterred, however, he embarked on his presidential election campaign. One of the great strengths of his campaign is that he's able to draw young people out onto the streets. And that is a massive challenge for the Kremlin. After all, in order to stay in power, the Kremlin and Vladimir Putin are learning from the mistakes made by authoritarian regimes. Amongst other things, this is revealed in the way they see violence towards demonstrators. The problem is that excessive use of violence towards young people has a hugely negative effect. In 
defiance of all political logic, the sympathy of older generations then shifts to the side of the demonstrators. Initially, Navalny's election strategy consisted of establishing election campaign staffs throughout the country. In the end, they numbered more than 80. On one of his trips to Biesk on March the 20th, 2017, an assailant sprayed antiseptic green dye into his face. The main feature of the powerful solution being that it is hard to wash off. In 2017, leading opposition politicians and prominent journalists alone were subject to five such attacks. Standing before you is Alexei Anatolyevich Navalny, a Russian citizen who lives in Moscow, in a prefab estate in Mariino. He has come here to Bisk to talk about the fight against corruption, about the fact that the Putin regime is robbing you. Shortly before these events, Navalny's Anti-Corruption Foundation published an almost hour-long video on YouTube purporting to show that Dmitry Medvedev has an astronomical fortune and luxury properties abroad. Navalny claims that the Russian Prime Minister, who is generally known for his liberal modernization course, heads a complex system of corruption. Within just 24 hours, the video had recorded over one million hits. But those in power ignored the accusations of corruption. Navalny reacted by calling for nationwide protests. His call had a widespread impact. People all over Russia took to the streets, more than 10,000 in Moscow alone. The internet was full of news of the actions, but Russian television showed nothing. So the anti-corruption fund began its own transmissions. From Vladivostok to Kaliningrad, people took to the streets in places where protests had been virtually unknown. Who here has been confronted with corruption in Russia? Raise your hands. The conspicuous number of pupils and students on this particular day saw Navalny accused from all sides of utilizing children for his dangerous political gain. When Navalny arrived at the demonstrations in Moscow, he was immediately arrested. For a while, protesters managed to block the police vehicle he was in. In the capital, there were clashes. I have no idea who will see this video, but I would like to say hello to everyone and tell them how proud I am of everyone who took part in today's action. So we're not talking about just a Moscow and St. Petersburg phenomenon. He is one of the first, through crowdfunding and great enthusiasm, to have organized staffs on a broad basis in the provinces, people who are also enthusiastic and engage in political campaigning for him. He has an impact on the provinces, especially in the regional capitals and in other major provincial cities. But it's a nationwide phenomenon, achieved not only via the social networks, but also through the people committed to him who take to the streets and also organize his electoral appearances on the spot. Navalny has set himself the goal of politically revitalizing the provinces which have traditionally been neglected, a plan that is unique in recent Russian history. In 2017, he opened campaign offices in 83 cities and, according to his own figures, succeeded in attracting nearly 200,000 volunteers. Time and again, Navalny stressed the transparency of his funding and affirmed that the 3.5 million euros for his electoral campaign come from crowdfunding. In September 2017, he embarked on his campaign tour. Travelling modestly, he planned rallies in 27 cities. This involved covering a total distance of 63,000 kilometers. His tour started in Murmansk, the port city in the northwest of the country. Located inside the Arctic Circle, Murmansk has a population of around 300,000. 27-year-old Violeta Grudina is Navalny's campaign manager in Murmansk. An LGBT activist, she has organized some official events for freedom and human rights. As a result, she's already been attacked several times. How much longer are we going to be scared? I'm not afraid. Are you? Great. I'm delighted to be taking part in an election campaign with people who aren't scared. 
Violetta, you're marvellous. It was vital to start our tour with a successful rally like that. I've reached the stage where nothing can intimidate me anymore. They can break my arms or my legs. They can cripple me. Naturally, I don't want to suffer, but I'm not afraid of pain. And I want change. It is painful already to see what is happening. That really hurts. I'm tired of living like this. I'd rather have two broken arms than live like this. According to sociologists, young Russians tend to be apolitical. Surveys carried out by the independent Levada Institute indicate that, of all age groups, the percentage of Putin supporters is biggest among the youth. The Navalny campaign in 2017 also corrected this assumption. 16-year-old Semyon Golobovsky goes to school in Vladivostok. He was sent to see the headmaster for wearing a Navalny pin in school. The head told him that the Secret Service had its eye on him. Semyon was threatened with expulsion and having a police record against his name. Hello, Vladivostok. Last week, Vladivostok made nationwide headlines by recording a conversation with a schoolboy. Did anyone hear it? The conversation was with Semyon Golubovsky, and here is that schoolboy who was supposed to be suspended. Simeon, it won't be easy to speak into the mic, but try to say a few words. Never be afraid of anything. Thanks a lot. I was expecting a speech, but you said what was most important. Never be afraid of anything. And there's nothing to add to that. Whose country is it anyway? <laughs> Vladimir Semyonov drives a minibus in Astrakhan on the Caspian Sea. Every day, he shows his passengers films made by the Foundation on the fight against corruption. That's enough of Navalny, I think. Let's talk instead. Alexei Navalny is an interesting character. He's currently on tour of the whole of Russia, telling people who he is and what he's planned. People understand him. They believe him and support him. If we all support him, he'll become president. Back then, we also supported Putin. See, you backed the wrong person. We've at least got one hope left. Alexei, may God protect him. All I can say, my friend, is that since 1991, we've believed in a lot of people. How many deputies have spoken here already? So what? Back then, we earned around 200 euros, and we're still earning that today, right? Less. Less. You said it, even less. Do you still believe in anyone? We make an effort. We vote, but they continue to rob us just like they always have done. If they keep robbing everyone, wouldn't it be worthwhile trying something else? Wait, please wait, one after another. After all, it's my rally, isn't it? Political scientists find it hard to pigeonhole Navalny. He's described sometimes as a liberal, sometimes as a nationalist, and even as the Kremlin's man. But irrespective of how his opponents see him, there is one question they all ask. Why is Navalny still at liberty? His supporters, however, see him as a fearless lone fighter defying the system. They're not interested in slotting their idol into some precise political category. And it is this partly fanatical exaltation that sees Navalny criticized as a leader figure like Putin. In Moscow, write about how bad the trains to Altai are. Let them keep on thieving. All the best. We're behind you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Altai believes you and puts its hopes in you. 
When a civil servant has no answer to the question of where he has found 20 million rubles to buy a house, when he only earns 1 million, what are we going to do with him? We'll institute proceedings. That works everywhere. And it will work with us. And I promise you that I will approve that law on my first day as president. Is that what you need? You must chant Navalny. I'll be right with you. <laughs> the major channels ignored Navalny. So just before the demonstrations on Russia Day, presenter Ksenia Sobchak interviewed him on the critical pay TV channel TV Rain. Who are you? Does your criticism come from the left or the right? Which of your views are liberal and which are right-wing conservative? Tell us, please, because it really interests me. After all, I could be one of your potential voters, although I still intend to stand myself. I think it's exciting to get to know you. Your opponent is Vladimir Putin. For him, everything is clear. He tells people, I'm for the Crimea. I'd even like to hold the election on the anniversary of the incorporation of the Crimea, because that is the greatest achievement of my presidency. Do you also have a clear position on this? Some of the things they taught you at the political science faculty were totally wrong. There is just no simple answer to the Crimea problem, none at all. Ksenia Sobchak, editor-in-chief of the lifestyle magazine L'Officiel, blogger, presenter and, according to Forbes magazine, in 10th place on the list of Russian stars. She is the daughter of celebrated Democrat Anatoly Sobchak, who in the 1990s was mayor of St. Petersburg and helped Putin to gain power. Sobchak played an active role in the demonstrations in 2011. Along with Navalny, Nemtsov and others, she belongs to the opposition and favours a parliamentary system with limited presidential powers. My name is Ksenia Sobchak. I am 36 years old and, like every other citizen of Russia, I have the right to stand for the office of president. I have decided to exercise this right. In her campaign, Ksenia Sobchak is calling on people to vote against everyone and offers herself as a suitable candidate for those who are dissatisfied with the lack of political competitiveness. Critics accuse her of sabotaging Navalny through her candidacy and thus helping the Kremlin. But she promises to withdraw if Navalny is officially permitted to stand himself. However, very few believe this. I would like to ask the daughter of one of the co-founders of the European University in St. Petersburg to step onto the stage. Like all opposition candidates, at the start of her campaign, Ksenia Sobchak also wanted to take part in opposition rallies. But when one opportunity presented itself in St. Petersburg, because of disturbances and catcalls, she scarcely managed to even finish a short speech. After that, her team decided against street campaigning. Get out of here! We're with you, Ksenia. What do you have to say to the criticism that you're a project of the Kremlin? Why should I react to lies? My actions speak for themselves. Ksenia Sobchak announced her candidature the moment Navalny was arrested yet again and was thus cut off from political events. As a candidate against everyone, she is invited onto all the country's major political programs and gives a whole raft of keynote press statements. As a media professional, she's in her element. And her PR manager is doing a great job. The dramatic composition and technical execution of her campaign are perfect. How crazy is that then, people? Your first time? Siberian frost, my first time in minus 40. That is just crazy. The truth we have forgotten must be brought back into our political life. So must the freedom we have lost. Truth, freedom, education, fair elections, independent tribunals, investment in people. That is what will bring us peace.
Thank you. So as not to search for words, speak in short sentences. As a rule, that sounds really good and carries weight. So, Ksenia Sobchak, why are you running for president? Because this is a chance for a change. I think this is important not to lose this chance during those very important elections. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vitaly Shklarov is a political technologist and an advisor to Sobchak's campaign. His special fields are the internet, new communication channels, and working with the youngest voters. The 41-year-old from Belarus is a political globetrotter and previously worked for Barack Obama in his election campaign in the United States and later for Bernie Sanders. You mentioned Alexei Navalny. He has said that it is fairly loathsome Kremlin game that goes by the title of let's put a liberal laughing stock up for the elections in order to distract attention. I mean, this is a lot of criticism you're facing, and you have said that you would withdraw your candidacy if Navalny is allowed to, uh, to run. Uh, I spoke with Navalny, and I hope he will agree with me that if he won't be uh, allowed to go to the elections, which I think he should be allowed, and I will be really fighting for this. But if no, what is our second option? Just stay at home and don't go to the election. It's not an option. Some people will like Navalny better as a model, while others will prefer Sobchak. But our task is to bring forth people for whom the fight for a leading political role is an important element of their own future planning. Suddenly people say, it is no longer the perennial Putin, but someone I recognize from having seen them in the flesh or on television, or some other person, or someone else, and they seem to be battling seriously for this office. So I can do that as well. Senya Sobchak has come to the Central Electoral Commission to register as a candidate. Every candidate is scrutinized by an authority accused of manipulating elections, since it decides who is allowed to stand. Of the 64 applicants for the 2018 elections, only 17 have been registered as candidates. After checking their documents, the Commission will announce the final number of candidates. Has a decision already been taken? We'll know after today's meeting. There's no point in discussing it, especially as the decision will be arrived at in the meeting. And secondly... But the decision affects you. I'm sorry, but there are formal criteria that cannot be avoided. Really formal? Formal and legal. But you know that these hurdles were created deliberately to prevent him standing. It's possible that the hurdles are intentional, but the fact is that they exist. Here's today's date, December the 25th. The 25th, yes. Now the pen doesn't work. And the most important moment. Alexei Navalny's campaign tour ended in Kaliningrad on December the 10th. Yegor Chernyuk and Oleg Alexeyev were the coordinators on the spot. 22-year-old Oleg was suspended from the university because of his political activities. He took the matter to court and was reinstated. 20-year-old Yegor grew up in difficult family circumstances. Regarded as highly talented, he has applied for a bursary to study at Harvard. They'll arrest a lot of people today. Navalny will use the hype and then head off, and we'll be left to face the music. Good people, this rally has not been approved by the municipality. Friends, it won't be long now before Alexei Navalny arrives. You are here unlawfully. What if we're taking a walk? The municipality of the city of Kaliningrad. Alexei Navalny will be here in just a few minutes' time. Just a few minutes more, and he'll be with us. Hello, everyone. Great weather, isn't it? You're going to show me your hometown? 
Покажете мне родной город? By the end of the tour, there were more and more signs that Navalny's chances of being registered as a candidate were extremely slim. He failed to draw millions of Russians onto the streets, which might have forced the Kremlin into talks. The latest polls by the Levada Institute showed that, despite the media blockade, he would still capture 2% of the votes. This is Kant's grave, isn't it? Am I right? It's his grave, isn't it? So what do we shout? Emmanuel! Emmanuel! What is wrong with you? The key question is whether people in the provinces have their own political representation and whether this representation has sufficient authority to take genuine decisions. I heard a radio program about Russia in which experts claimed it was vital for the country to have not one, but ten Navalny's. Only then, they said, will we have democracy. The fact is, though, that this office will always be seized by the strongest of the strong. And all the others are doomed to obey. They remain sheep. 742 participants have voted in favor. Those against? Nil. Abstentions? Nil. Congratulations, friends. We have a candidate for the office of President of the Russian Federation. Alexei Anatolyevich Navalny. Most political scientists in Russia believe that Navalny used a Western campaign model and is thus a kind of foreigner on the Russian political stage. European experts, on the other hand, assert that he does not fit into any framework they are familiar with, especially as, in contrast to the classic liberal opposition in Russia, he avoids any contact with the West. He's certainly not a liberal. He doesn't fit into our Western pattern of the opposition, always having to be liberals. And that is why he is so successful. Whereas the liberal opposition would attract perhaps 2% of the votes and basically remain marginal, he is someone who stands for Russia, for a patriotic Russia, for a great Russia, for a strong Russia, but for a Russia without Putin and without corruption, and what I would perhaps also say without oligarchs. In the provinces on December the 24th, 2017, Navalny was nominated as an independent presidential candidate. It was more of a symbolic act. Nevertheless, as required by electoral law, in each town at least 500 people turned up. In the evening, Navalny went to the Central Electoral Commission to hand in the necessary papers for nomination. But that's merely the first step towards being registered as a candidate. It is impossible for our candidacy not to be approved. An election without us wouldn't be an election, right? <laughs> Confirmation that I am not standing against my own will. On December the 25th, the Central Electoral Commission came to a decision on the registration of candidates. Navalny was present in person. In front of you is a draft resolution on the rejection of the independent candidate Alexei Anatolyevich Navalny, nominated by an initiative group. I need your votes. Who is in favor? and against. Are you abstaining or are you not present, so to speak? So basically not present. Fine. Let's count. Twelve are in favour. And with that, I would like to give Alexei Anatolyevich the floor. As expected, the non-approval of Navalny's registration was justified by the Kirovles affair. Yet, in a similar situation in 2013, the Electoral Commission had come to a different conclusion. I do not like the Electoral Commission. What are they, robots? To me, at least, they seem to be alive. You can touch them. They have healthy complexions and are well-nourished. They're an independent body. I understand what is going on in their heads. I see the difficult situation they're in. 
But once in a lifetime, people can do something meaningful. Despite all the emotionality of his appearance, the outcome was probably what Navalny expected. He still insists that elections without him, elections without a genuine opposition, are an out-and-out -out Kremlin orchestration. Only a few minutes after the decision was announced, he activated Plan B. This involves keeping the election turnout as low as possible to undermine the democratic legitimacy of Putin's fourth term of office. As from today, we're on electoral strike and call on all voters in Russia to participate and agitate against this absurd procedure, which is described as an election. At the same time, we want to organize election controls to deny them the chance to rig the vote, which of course they will try to do. Many thanks. I'm always a bit skeptical about election boycotts because in the end you let the others vote, so to speak. OK, so you try to delegitimize the election. And it also keeps him in the picture. Although he is no longer a part of the election battle, he continues to provoke the system by calling on people not to vote. Putin is also standing as an independent candidate, which means that he aspires to the status of president of all Russians. That means no one can compete against him unless he is an opposition leader who wants to abolish the regime, or will be the next president of all Russians appointed by Putin himself. That status per se does not provide for any competition. Today, the office of president is an accursed job. I shall stand for the office of president of the Russian Federation. You are a bad president, you have no positive program, and you are unfit to govern the country. We will challenge you in these elections, and we intend to win. If a wonderful man like Navalny takes office, he will become a dragon. If a pointless person takes over, the country is doomed. Yeah, I officially announced that I... We have the power! God damn it! We have the power! They're attacking us! June the 12th, Russia Day, celebrates the establishment in 1990 of Russia as an independent country following the collapse of the Soviet Union. The rule of law and political freedom were to be the pillars of the new state. Under Putin, Russian Independence Day has become more and more of an apolitical public festival. But in 2017, opposition politician and Putin challenger at the forthcoming elections, Alexei Navalny, chose Russia Day in particular for nationwide anti-corruption demonstrations. Navalny has a positive message, especially for young people. You can change your country. You are, so to speak, a part of this wonderful... We will run for the most important office in Russia, the office of president. Where the current presidency is concerned, there is no viable alternative.
It makes me sick to hear the hypocritical comments by our civil servants who claim that our young people should not be interested in politics. Of course they must be interested and play a part. They must put pressure on those in power and force them to change. Today that could be the most important thing of all for our country. Three days later, in direct link, the annual citizens' question time with the president, Putin was also asked about Navalny and the youth demonstrations. Planned. He's also a patriot. He too loves Russia. This is also his message. But his statement, I believe, and that is his positive attitude, is that we can change things. We can change this system by taking to the streets. This, I think, is the new approach which he represents. In Moscow and dozens of other cities, demonstrations took place in addition to the official Russia Day festivities. Young protesters clashed with police almost everywhere.